Before we begin our Bible study today, I would like to ask God to forgive or ask God to help the family of the two officers forgive the young man, Brentley, for killing two innocent officers while they were on their job. As a mother, I want to give my condolences to the family of the two officers that were murdered this weekend, Officer Ramos and Officer Lau. Two men of color were murdered by a black young man. We don't know why, and there's no excuse for this attack. Only thing I can say is how satin I am behind this attack. Violence produce violence. And I'm praying that we as a people learn that innocent people are killed behind violence of any sort. We learn that from war and today, New York City mourns two minority officers. For no apparent reason, the city mourns in silence. Three family lives have been affected behind this violence. Lord, forgive, protect, and bless the families that are surviving the death of their loved ones. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Women in Ministry no one looks at Eve as the mother of ministry. We don't see her as a minister ministering to her husband and her children. And yet, God revealed through the Holy Spirit that Eve truly was the first female minister. She, the mother of creation, innocent as she was, produced males and females from her womb. Generation of men and women that will continue to strive to seek to find the father of creation. Sometimes we have to fall in order to get to the promised land only because of the original fall of man. Our curiosity, that innocent nature that makes us want to know what's going on in the world and how do we fit on earth. Today, 
we're having our lesson. Women Bible study. And our focus is on women. Praise God. Women of the New Testament. The New Testament is about Jesus. His character shows very clearly in relation to the people around him. When dealing with hypocrisy, he was strong. When dealing with children, he was tender and loving. Followings are portraits of the women with whom Jesus related during his earthly ministry, as well as women in the early church who worshipped the ascended Jesus. These women showed great faith in human flaws. They were forgiven women, friends, and disciples, and leaders in the church. Their short stories give us examples for our own relationship with the risen Lord. Amen? Basically, we're going to take each story about our women of the New Testament from the Gospel of Luke. So prior to getting into the story, I would like us to have a history about Luke. Amen? On the Gospel according to Luke. Luke, a physician, writes with the compassion and warmth of a family doctor as he carefully documents the perfect humanity of the Son of Man, Jesus Christ. Like emphasis, Jesus' ancestry, birth, and early life before moving carefully and chronologically through his earthly ministry, growing belief, and growing opposition developed side by side. Those who believe are challenged to count the course of discipleship. Those who oppose will not be satisfied until the Son of Man hangs lifeless on a cross. But the resurrection ensures that his purpose will be fulfilled to seek and to save that which was our theme on today would be Elizabeth. Elizabeth's virtue, her gift is patience. And we're coming from Luke chapter 1 and 5. That's Luke chapter 1 and 5, which reads, There was in the day of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias of the court of Albia, and his wife was of the daughter of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. So we know that Elizabeth came from the tribe of Aaron, the priest. Amen? And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinance of the Lord blameless. So they both followed the statutes and judgments, the law of God, the book of the Torah. And they had no child because that Elizabeth was barren and they both were now well stricken in age. Well, we understand that when we get a certain age, menopausal age, women can no longer have children. So what does this tell us? It tells us that Elizabeth had ceased having her menstruation so she could no longer have babies. But we all know that men can have children for as long as they live. They could be 100 years old and still produce babies. Now, we're not saying that, you know, they're going to be as, as vibrant as they were at 18, but 
they still have some strength in that sperm. Amen? Eight. And it came to pass that while he executed the priest's office before God in the order of his court, according to the custom of the priest's office, his lot was to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. So he had a job. His job description was that he had to burn the incense or keep the incense burning in the temple. Amen? 10. And the whole multitude of the people were praying without at the time of incense. 11. And there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. 12. And when Zechariah saw him, he was troubled, and fear fell upon him. Now you notice, when Zechariah saw the angel, he knew it was an angel, and immediately fear came upon him. Right away, fear came because he felt he did something wrong. Amen? But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayers is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. 14. And thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink, and he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost, even from his mother's womb. Now the angel is telling Zacharias that something new is going to be, something new is going to happen with this child that his wife Elizabeth is going to have. He is not going to be able to drink any alcohol beverages, not even wine, and that he's going to be filled with the Holy Spirit even from his mother's womb. Prior to John coming on the scene, his conception, no one can actually say the Holy Spirit was felt by quote unquote human. Amen. So here God let the angel know to let Zechariah know God is doing something new in Zion. And many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God. Because again, what happened? Men and women turn people away from God. Let me say it again. Men and women, evil men and women, turn people that are searching for God, turn them away from God with a whole bunch of crap. Like Jesus not being born on December 25th and yet bright men of the core comes up with an idea to draw men and women into the church by saying he was born on December 25th, not understanding the repercussions of the lie. Because what happens when a child finds out his parents lie, he no longer believes in his parents. And so, when people grow up and find out that the church lied about something as small as December 25th, yeah, it sounds like a small thing, but a lot of people leave the church and say that everything the church tells you is a bunch of lies. And this is what has been happening for years and years and years. Amen? So, this is what we are trying to avoid on today. 16. 
and many of the children of Israel shall he return to the Lord their God. 17. And he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the father to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. So God explained it to Zechariah what his son's job is to do, is to be, to draw people closer to God, give them some enlightenment, preparing them for the Lord. Okay? And Zechariah said unto the angel, Whereby shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife well stricken in years. And the angel answering said unto him, I am Gabriel, that stands in the presence of God, and am sent to speak unto thee, and lo, show thee these glad tidings. And behold, thou shalt be dumb, and not able to speak, until the day that these things shall be performed, because thou believest not my words, which shall be fulfilled in their season. So because of doubt, disbelief, Zechariah's speech was taken from him. And so could this happen to any one of us today? Sure it can. But basically, another thing happens when we doubt God. What happens, whatever it is we're supposed to be believing on, does not get fulfilled. Here it is. You're waiting for a breakthrough. You want a family member to be saved. You want um, a parent to be healed. You want a child. Because of your disbelief, the miracle cannot happen. Amen? So I, I hope I'm making it clear um, the importance of not doubting. So the Gospel of Luke begins not with the story of Jesus, but with an unusual couple, Zechariah, a priest in the temple in Jerusalem, and his wife Elizabeth. Their story starts like the story of Abraham and Sarah. Who said God doesn't do a thing a second time around? The first parallel Luke notes is a painful reality. Elizabeth, like Sarah, was barren and elderly. God uses the lives of these women to show that he is the God of life and miracles. Amen. Are you expecting a miracle on today? I pray you are. In Jesus' name, amen. After 400 years of silence from God since the clothing of the Old Testament, an angel from God surprised Zechariah during his service in the temple. The angel promised a child to the old couple. Like Abraham and Sarah, Zechariah found it difficult to believe the words of the angel. Even though Zechariah was a priest in the temple, he could not believe that God was again speaking to his people. But his unbelief does not stop God. Elizabeth became pregnant. God demonstrates that there is nothing impossible for him. He transforms childlessness into fertility. He brings life where there is none. In Elizabeth's view, God restored her and gave her a new beginning. However, God's plans go beyond hers. He was about to restore humanity through the birth of Jesus Christ. Just as God changed Elizabeth's sadness into joy, God was about to produce an unexpected reversal for humanity. Elizabeth's son, John, who became John the Baptist, prepared the way for a change. 
God shows that he is faithful to his promises as he had promised to the patriarchs and through the prophets. God now begins the process of restoring his people and the whole world. And yet, they are not aware of what's going on behind the scenes. Amen? Elizabeth not only experienced God's special favor, she was also the first person in the Gospel of Luke about whom we read that she was filled with the Holy Spirit in Luke 141. She and the baby in her womb were the first ones to recognize Jesus still in Mary's womb as the promised Messiah as she prophesied to, be, to Mary, the baby leaped in her womb. Does that not show us, saints, that God works through his people and he makes leaders out of unsuspected women? Elizabeth and her baby, her unborn baby, recognized that Mary's baby was the Messiah. And it was possible by the presence of the Holy Spirit in them. Amen. Continue to praise and worship God. For he has so much in store for his people. Until the second. So what have we learned? In the birth of John the Baptist. Luke 1, 5-25. We learn the appearance of an angel to announce the birth of John, the Messiah, forerunner, was the fulfillment of prophecy made by the prophet Malachi in 4.5. Luke shows the continuity of God's activity from the Old Testament into the New. We learn that God keeps his word. God keeps his word in relationship to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and this was repeated many times during the history of Israel. Father, we thank you and we praise you for your faithfulness. And from the point where Jesus' birth is announced, we learn that God will use ordinary people to fulfill his promise in 1, 26-38, even though we did not cover that. Jesus' birth is foretold. Mary responds to the angel's announcement was greeted with a resounding, I am available to you, Lord. That's what Mary said. And yet we find her seeking Elizabeth because the angel told Elizabeth that, uh, the angel told Mary that Elizabeth was pregnant. So we also learn an important lesson from Mary's visit to Elizabeth and Mary's song in Luke 1, 39-51. Certainly, the angel's announcement to Mary that she would give birth to Jesus was significant to assure her of the significance of her child's birth. But now, Elizabeth gave her further confirmation. This elderly relative called Mary's child her Lord in Luke 143. Furthermore, Elizabeth seemed aware that Mary had a heavenly visitor appear even before Mary had told her. Sometimes God gives us more than one confirmation of his will. Because again, Elizabeth prophesied to her cousin Mary. Amen. So we, I'm, I'm thanking God for those times when He gives me added confirmation that I am doing His will. What about you? Amen. <laughs>